Welcome to NDTR Spotlight. I'm your host, Marie Lorraine. Today we have Caitlin on our show and she has her bachelor's, her bachelor's degree in nutrition and dietetics. And she recently became a DTR in February of 2021. So she's going to give us all the hints and tricks on studying for the exam. And she is a go-getter because she's starting her graduate and dietetic internship in 20, in this very soon in the yeah. next school year in September, in September, she's starting her degree. So studying for the exam, getting into schools, transitioning. This is the interview to watch. If you are in that boat as Caitlin has done it so eloquently and she has agreed to share how she's done it with us. So Caitlin, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm so yeah. excited. Yes. Yes. Me too. So let us get started. And the first question I always ask is how did you find out about the NDTR credential? Um, I found out about it through school. Um, so basically how I got here, should I start there? Yeah. Like that how I got into school. Yeah. Okay. So basically how I figured out that this was even a job, a dietitian was even a job or an NDT or anything was I went to the university of Kansas for a couple of years and I had no idea what I was doing. And all of my friends were deciding their majors, figuring it out. And I had no idea what I was doing basically. So I went home um, and I moved home and went to a local community college. I needed one more credit to graduate with an associate's degree. So I decided to take something that I thought would be really easy and fun. And that was a nutrition course. It's like introduction to nutrition and I loved it. Um, so then I started figuring out how I could make this a whole career. And I started to learn like what a dietitian is where I can major in um, nutrition and dietetics somewhere um, through an Ascend accredited degree. Mm -hmm. um, and the closest to me at the time, I was in Kansas City. The closest to me at the time was Columbia, Missouri or Denver, Colorado. Obviously, gonna go to Denver over Columbia, no offense. I'm a Jayhawk though. Can't go to Mizzou if I'm a Jayhawk. Um, and I love to ski. So I figured I'd just come out here and kind of wing it and see how I could do it and I did. Um, just finished everything up and that's kind of how we figured it out. Um, the teachers there are amazing. They um, kind of go over it with you, like the different career paths you can take with this degree. Um, so they went over the DTR, um, they went over the RD exam. You can go to PA school after this, you could become a doctor after this, you could um, you know, work in research, like you don't need the RD, but it's a good thing to have if this is what you want to be doing is guiding people on um, like nutrition intake and especially in disease states and in a community setting where you need to know, you know, like what kind of resources there are, WIC educators, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of how I figured out about it. Um, and yeah, that's kind of how I figured it out. Wow. That's really cool that you're, you, you said you had great teachers and I, I definitely agree if they were talking to you about if you're in a program for dietetics and they weren't saying that dietitian was the end goal, mm -hmm. that there is like, there's other things that you can do with this basis of knowledge. Yes. And then they just started their own, um, internship too, through this university. So that's brand new. If anyone wants to, um, look into that. Um, plug for MSU Denver. Great teachers. They're amazing. Um, would recommend. That's, that's awesome. It's great when you can recommend your undergrad schooling because it's so foundational. So you took the exam pretty quickly or in February, 2021. So what was that process like for you studying for, or why did you decide, let's back up real quick. Why did you decide to go the DTR as opposed to going right for the dietitian? So I wanted to make my application more competitive. I I, I support myself. I um, have worked full time while getting my undergrad um, because I was like a transfer student, um, and I moved out here. Didn't I had friends out here, but I didn't have family or anything. So I'm living on my own. It's very expensive to live here. Um, so I had to work full time while I was doing this, um, and because of that, my GPA was not as competitive as other people's, and that's fine. That's okay. Um, it's not an end all be all if you're a little bit below what you think you should be. Um, but what was recommended to me over and over again was to get the DTR. Um, and that just kind of shows the internships or grad schools in general that you can pass the RD exam likely if you can pass the DTR or you can just pass any sort of um, credentialing or qualifying exam at that point. Um, so that's kind of why I did it and it paid off really well. And I always had a dream 
this is like so lame, but I've always had a dream to have credentials after my name. <laughs> and I wanted to do that as soon as possible. And I could do that with the DTR. So it felt really good. It was a huge self-esteem boost for me. Um, I passed it on the first try. Um, so yeah, it was a huge self-esteem booster. It allowed me to feel like there is a chance that I could get into grad school and get into an internship. Um, and if not, that's okay too, because I have credentials after my name, like a personal goal of mine. I've always wanted to do that. So I've been able to. Yeah, that's, that's so great. Yeah. The, having those, writing those names, the letters after your name, it's like, ah, oh, I've accomplished so much. And the fact that you're working full time, that's awesome that you're working full time <laughs> and doing, cause nutrition, everyone will tell you the undergrad degree is, is not, it's not easy, you know, and then it's so competitive competing. So being able to do that DTR to enhance your resume. Mm -hmm was great. And it sounds like, you know, your application, you already have this full-time experience and you have the DTR. So it looks like you're, you can handle a lot and you need to handle a lot in internships as you probably already know. Right. Yeah. So I have like the work, the work experience down and, but I just was like, so worried about my GPA. Like I literally, my friends and family will tell me I was literally like a basket case about it. I, <laughs> I was so down on myself because it was, kind of low and I um really just like was so nervous about all of it and I took the DTR in just enough time so that I could put it on my application so not only was I working on DICUS and other applications um I was studying for the exam at the same time and working <laughs> so um yeah I kind of don't recommend doing that necessarily but you can do it if I can do it so you all can do it too so yes and that that's that leads into my next question so I, I hear you're working full-time you're doing diecast which that's complicated getting all those references and studying for this exam what was the process how did you manage all of that a uh, planner writing everything down. I'm like such a note person. I have to have lists, write everything down, color code everything. I had post-its everywhere. Um, but yeah, so I just, I kind of had decided early on or like midway through my undergrad that I probably was going to take the DTR anyway. So i would kind of been always looking on Facebook and on Reddit and stuff like that. Like what are the best study materials to use? Um, you know, I made connections with people who had also already taken the DTR in my area. Like I worked with a girl who had passed it when I had first started working the first hospital job I was at. And she really guided me a lot. Her, um, she had some really helpful, sorry, animal, <laughs> helpful <laughs> tips and tricks. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> um, helpful tips and tricks, um, about like what study materials to use, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I settled on visual veggies. And then I also had a book, um, I can't remember what it was called, Mom Momatrex DTR Study Guide. I think that's what it was. Um, that's great, read through it for sure. Um, but visual veggies was amazing because, you know, they have videos. It's a guy, I think it's the guy who created it, um, writing on a whiteboard, you know, helping you do calculations talking about scoop sizes because scoop sizes was something that we didn't really go over very much my undergrad. I kind of was confused on that. Um, so, and everything's like broken up into like the domains. So you have like the community, the clinical, all of that. Um, and it is set up kind of like how the exam is set up. Like it's very computer-based. There's practice tests. You have your scores right in front of you. You can practice um, like, you know, the areas that you're lacking in and figure that out. And, um, Go from there. So visual veggies was amazing. I've heard other sources are really good too, but those are just the two that I happened to settle on and they um, worked out very well. Nice. I use visual veggies as well. And I really, I really like the software. How long did it you take to study for your exam? Oh gosh. I think I kind of really pulled the trigger and signed up for it um, in November, December. And then I took it in February. So I gave myself like three to four months just so I wasn't like cramming everything in. I'm kind of a procrastinator sometimes. Um, it'll happen, but I wanted to give myself that space and that time. So you kind of have to figure out for yourself, be realistic about your goals, be realistic about who you are. If you procrastinate a little bit, maybe give yourself some time. But I also knew I wanted to add it onto my applications, like I mentioned before. Um, so I needed to make sure that I was really holding myself accountable to that. Um, so, rule of thumb is to always, you know, schedule yourself some study time, 
Um, I use like a study plant growing app too. So it's like, <laughs> you like have the app, you turn it on, you set the time for how much, how long you want to study. And then if you pick up your phone and exit the app, to like text or something, it kills your little plant. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of how I was able to like hold myself accountable, like kind of make it fun and motivating, I guess. Um, but yeah, I would recommend planners, um, anything that will just help you hold yourself accountable to that time because it it does it it can be difficult um especially if nutrition is like not like if it's not you know something that you're like born to do like I feel like some people really feel that way and some people struggle especially like in MNT or the clinical aspect um it's good to you know kind of give yourself some time to look over that stuff so yeah, I hundred percent agree. And it's so broad. It's like, you can be really good at community and be terrible at clinical or vice versa. So I feel like that study app with the plant sounds real, real cool. And I was working in food service, but I didn't know anything about like the scoop sizes really or any, and I had to really go over that stuff. Cause I, although I'm working in food service, like I mentioned before, it was a little bit of like nutrition education and kind of guiding patients on what they can and cannot have based on their own therapeutic diets. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just good to kind of figure out what you're doing and where you're lacking so that you can focus on that. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to ask, since you took it pretty recently, what was the process of like signing up for the exam and, and all those com- complicated computer things? Was it, is, was it easy process for you or what did that look like for someone um, who's looking to take the exam? It was kind of confusing, but I, um, so you have to, at least for me, I had to reach out to my DPD director and let her know that I was going to take the exam so that she could send me like a verification statement. And then I think you, I'm trying to remember because I like Googled all of this so many times. Um, I think you can do it through my CDR um, and they like direct you over to Pearson where it'll have like calendar dates and locations. Um, so you sign up through Pearson. Um, but you can find all of it on my CDR or Google or whatever, but you will have to reach out to your um, DPD director, get a verification statement. If you don't already have one, they should give you one after if you are graduating with a nutrition and dietetics degree specifically. Um, and then, yeah, and then I just signed up online and I kind of, I got that book and I kind of read through it and then I was like, I need more than this. Um, so I asked around friends, uh, Facebook, Reddit, what they used in visual veggies. So I got that in like December, I think. And I just gave myself, slowly gave myself time, like watched the videos and all of that. Um, so it is, it can be kind of confusing to sign up. Um, you do have to like go back and reach out to people. Um, so you need to, you know, remember your DPD program director's name and email and all of that. If you're not still attached to your school email, luckily I was, so that kind of made it easier for me to have access to her. Um, but if you've been out of school for a while, you might have to do that. So, yeah, that's, that's good. That was a good way to explain that process. It's a lot of like clicking and websites and <laughs> yeah. like if you have trouble with computers and signing up with things through that route, um, I don't know. Yeah. So it takes the time, but figure, <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> it definitely does. Definitely does. So switching tracks a little bit from the DTR, you are currently working as a, um, in ICU as a milk tech, right? Is that yeah, correct? In the NICU. NICU. I said ICU. NICU. Very different. So what yeah. has been your experience with working in nutrition as so, a DTR and before you were a DTR? Um, okay. So before I was a DTR, I was working in dietary food nutrition services at a level one trauma hospital um, here in Colorado. And, um, you know, after I took the DTR, I felt a lot more comfortable, like broadening my scope of what I told patients about how their bodies might be working and um, things like that. Like I have access to their charts, but we're not looking at diagnosis or anything, but you can kind of like ask them, you know, what they may be going through based off their therapeutic diet. So you can explain things better to them. Um, so I felt more comfortable doing that. My coworkers felt more comfortable asking me things about specific diets. Like we have some super rare ones that we work with, like a Kyle leak or, um, oh gosh, what are the other ones? Like immunocompromised. Um, we had a pet scan sarcoid diet on there. 
that was pretty rare um, that only a couple people have ever been on. So my coworkers felt more comfortable uh, going to me with questions and that um, was really nice. And then I went over to this new job, um, the milk tech job, and it is a lot of calculating of formula, like in milliliters and stuff. It's very similar to like calculating a tube feed, except it's slightly more basic because it's just like milk and formula additives to, to the milk. Um, but it is awesome. It's an awesome job. It's lab experience. Um, it is, you know, keeping your brain sharp for calculations when you're going to have to do that later in life. Um, yeah, and it's, and I think, so I had gotten the offer and we had negotiated a pay point or she asked me what I wanted and I told her. And then she came back later and offered me more money based on my experience in nutrition. So I think that the DTR credential allowed her to feel more comfortable giving me more money um, based off of that too. I can't, that's only an assumption, but I like to think that that's why. Um, so that was really awesome as well. Like it's kind of paying off. <laughs> yeah, I think that is, I mean, especially in the hospital setting, when you have somebody working for you and they have credentials after their name, because credentials are so important in the medical field I feel because it shows that you you know right you know your stuff you're not yeah. just you know a <laughs> random graduate from some program um, so and that's interesting too you said that because your position do you have to have nutrition as a background to do your position no, you don't um so they were just telling me they hired a girl who used to work at a bank um you don't have to have it but a lot of the girls in that lab do have it and I think a lot of people will go over to that area um, especially if they're interested in like mom and baby um, nutrition and dietetics and stuff like that. That's kind of how I found it. Um, but, you know, I have some girls in the, in that lab that um, do have backgrounds in nutrition and dietetics, some that want to become nurses, some that have IBCLC, which is um, lactation consulting um, and stuff like that. So, you know, it's a kind of a hodgepodge of people that are just interested in healthcare, specifically mom and baby, and kind of trying to move through it and figure out where they want to go next with it. Like I know one of the gals in there is an IBCLC who wants to become an RN, a lactation nurse. One gal wants to do um, like um, psychology um, with an emphasis in like postpartum, like working with postpartum mothers and how she can help them with resources. Um, I'm looking to go into RD, mom and baby, pediatrics, um, uh, you know, like pre-conception, I guess, like helping moms with their nutrition before they conceive um, is an interest of mine. So it's a random mix of people. And I think a lot of that is because you can't find like a proper DTR job in Colorado, like they don't really use them. Um, so you can get your credential and it, it, it will help for sure, but there's a lack of that specific type of job here. Um, so you kind of have to get creative with it. Yeah. And I love, I love that you said that because that's kind of what I was kind of asking or wanting to talk about next is even though that job doesn't require a DTR or not, but you kind of already mentioned that because you had that, you kind of, you know, you would stand up against someone who has a banking background right. Right. in the application process. And I think that's where the relevance of the DTR credential is still important, even when it's not a DTR specific job. Mm -hmm. So for that job, did you have to go through an interview process or were you just kind of promoted? How did that work? Yeah. So I, I actually went to a different hospital too, um, but it's just the one next door. They um, have like a very large campus and they all kind of sit together. Um, but yeah, so I had to go, um, I interviewed with them and then I had to do like a one day of shadowing because they had had a gal come in there who like took the job and then she was like, this is not what I thought it was, um, which happens, it's fine. Um, but I did the shadowing day and um, they really enjoyed my personality, the questions I was asking. Um, I guess I was like very inquisitive and all of that, but it's because there was an interest, like a true interest in the position. Um, so that's kind of how it was. It's probably different everywhere. And I think this specific job is really up and coming. Like I don't, I think a milk tech position is rather new, like within the last decade or so. Um, so there might be more popping up in uh, people's areas if they um, want to start looking into that. 
Yeah. Yeah. I know it said that in the college, in the hospital that I work at, or I interned at during your interview, did you have to explain what the DTR was? No. Um, I think they mostly know, mm-hmm. uh, especially because one of the gal I had, it was a the hiring manager and then like the lead, um, of the lab in my interview and the lead does have a nutrition degree. So I'm sure that she probably knew they didn't really ask me about it, but it was on my resume. Um, so that could be part of it. Yeah. I mean, they took your resume back and offered you more than you asked for. Right. So I, I think that means something. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. Yeah. So, oh, sorry. Oh no. I'm here. Sometimes <laughs> it, sometimes it does that. So with your experience now, you're working as a, you're working in the hospital and you're also applying to grad school, which is stressful and doing die casts, which is a lot in of itself. So how, what was that process like? And how did you flaunt the DTR credential on your application? It was so stressful. <laughs> um, okay. So I did, I passed the exam the day before I submitted die cast, Um, and I planned it that way. So, um, I think there's like a little section in Dicus where it asks you your test scores and it's like the TOEFL um and then the other one gosh what is that I don't know the GRE yes Mm -hmm. the GRE and then there's one for like other I think and I put that on um and I put that I had passed the exam um, and what my score was in that section and then I also put it on my resume um just to emphasize that it's there and I have it (laughs) Um, but actually the program I got into University of Vermont does not utilize DICUS so I applied separately to that program because I had just stumbled upon it somehow and um, so that was just in my resume and I think that they had like a section in their application too where it asked like what exams do you have or whatever Um, so that's kind of just where it goes just put it in like an other area and then put it on your resume for extra emphasis that you have it and I'm sure it won't be missed. So what was the process of interviewing and getting matched and finding your di- your program that you're going to be starting in the fall? Okay. Um, yes. So I don't know how I found that program since it doesn't utilize DICUS, but I had spread set up like a spreadsheet halfway through my undergrad, um, kind of like going through each internship, what I needed from it, what I wanted from it. Um, and that's how I narrowed it down to like, I narrowed it down to like 12 uh, internships. And then I picked four or five based off of spring or fall um, DICUS enrollment. Um, and I think University of Vermont is listed as having a coordinated program, but does not utilize DICUS on Eat Right. Um, so I think that's how I found it. Um, but yeah, so it, it was, um, it basically was the same situation. Um, you have to apply to different grad schools anyways in unison with DICUS usually. So I did like University of Vermont, I think, or no, yeah, I did University of Vermont, University of Montana, um, Utah State, MSU Denver. Um, so when you're doing all of those through DICUS, you also simultaneously have to do a grad school application anyways because I was looking for something that had the comp combined to, to begin with. Um, so it basically was, yeah, it university of Vermont, you're just sending off your application and then they did set up an interview. It was with an alum of the program. Um, and then I just kind of like chatted with her. And then a couple of days later, they told me that I had gotten in, but they, um, had to wait and see, um, based off of, who else had applied if they were going to do a different program for DICUS through DICUS or if they were going to do University of Vermont. So they have six spots in person in Burlington, Vermont, and then they have four that are online. So I had told them that I wanted to be in Burlington, um, but I was flexible to do either. Um, But because all the Burlington in-person ones had filled up after, even after DICUS was submitted, I just um, am in the online program. So I'm setting up my own rotations and all of that right now um, to figure out <laughs> as well. Um, but that's it. Yeah, it's pretty similar to just standard DICUS application. You just don't have to add it to DICUS. Sorry, that's great. You're doing your own program. Yeah, so it's a, so it's a self-paced distance program. Um, 
So I'll have classes on Mondays and then I'll do my rotations Tuesday through Friday. And then I'll have Saturdays and Sundays off to do to work or do whatever. Um, but yeah, so they break it down based off how you want it. Like I have um, a week at Jeffco Public Schools um, for a nutrition, um, school nutrition, at a week of school nutrition, sorry, a week of school nutrition. And then I'll be with Jeffco Public Schools like for um, food service as well, food service management. And then I've nailed down another um, like elective, which will be about a week or two, I think. And that's um, an entrepreneur out of uh, North Carolina. She has her own business and it's an emphasis uh, for fertility, mom and baby, but she carries it all the way through the life cycle. So she'll do like um, nutrition, education and counseling for the mother and father when they're trying to get pregnant all the way up until their child turns 18, if they choose to. Oh, wow. So she's That's, doing learn the- a lot there. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, you're so, gonna- yeah. So I have all those nailed down. So now I just have to do my clinical. Um, and then I think like long-term care, um, WIC, and then the health department. So I have to get all this figured out. <laughs> as your work experience prior to, you know, starting your program as a DTR and just working in the field helped you land these? Yes. Um, so a, the bulk of my experience with work has been um, food service. I was a server. I've been a hostess. I've been a server. I've washed the dishes. I've done it all. Um, and then I also grew up working in my father's dental office. My mom was a CNA. Um, I have a bunch of aunts that are nurses. I have, you know, a couple of uncles and great grandfather, or my grandfather was also a dentist. Um, so just healthcare is just in our blood, in our nature. We want to take care of people in various ways. And one way that I wanted to take care of people was through food. Um, so I had just happened to figure out that you can actually do that with a, a job. So <laughs> I was able to do that. Um, but that's been the bulk of my experience is just working in restaurants and um, my dad's dental office. And I also did Medicare collections for to be the kidney dialysis. Um, so that kind of helped me understand like um, revenue cycles, um, billing, Medicare specifically in relation to ESRD, because everyone that has ESRD, which is end stage renal disease, um, automatically gets signed up for Medicare no matter your age. Um, so that's another thing I was able to learn about and figure out. They also go really deep in the training of what dialysis is, why people need it, what kind of medications they get. Um, so that was really helpful actually in um, MNT when we were learning about um, renal therapy and renal diets and stuff like that I actually like had already known a bunch of stuff just because I worked for a billing office <laughs> and uh, I know it literally yeah. it's just like add up to where you're just able to carry it out through life and be like I'm on the right path and that was something that really made me feel like I was on the right path um, yeah so in my work experience previously that's nice. Some people like rush right into work and like, or rush into getting the RD and DTR. And it's like, your experience is really going to pay, even like working into billing is going to pay off in the schooling. So it's really cool how life kind of falls into place for, for you, if you're in the right path. Mm -hmm. So kind of switching gears a little bit with your experience in dietetics, I like to ask everyone I interview, what has been your experience with diversity um, in this field, whether it's skin tone or food or culture or, um, who you're working with? Lots of diversity. Um, I like to think that Colorado is a pretty diverse place in general. I've been lucky to get my um, education here. Um, that is something that they really emphasize too um, at MSU is diversity. Um, like one of our professors did like a whole like diversity video um, and education to like send out to students who like didn't know their majors. Um, and stuff like that. And then working um, also at the university, they have uh, like a cultural nutrition course where we like cook and try cuisines all throughout the entire world um, and talk about how they like will fit into a diet mm -hmm. and um, what disease states commonly show up in those different places of the world and why and how you can um, guide people through that while staying true to their culture. You know what I mean? Like you can't, you can't tell you know, a Hispanic person that they can't have like tortillas, rice, beans, like all of that, no red meat, pork, because it's like so invested like in their culture um, that 
for you to want to change that up, it's almost destined for failure. If you have to do like an intervention with them that does not include their culture, it's not going to work. Um, so you have to make all foods fit to a certain degree. Um, also working at this larger hospital, there was a very large, um, there is a very large homeless population nearby. Um, and there are people coming in from Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, Utah, New Mexico, those places as well, because of the type of care that we provide. And because those places are, some of those places at least are kind of lacking in hospital access, healthcare access, availability, beds probably because of COVID, like who knows? Um, so we had a lot of people from all over coming into um, the hospital and trying to figure out how they could eat what they wanted to eat while making small adjustments that fit within their diet um, is really difficult sometimes. <laughs> um, yeah. it's, it can be difficult, especially if the patient wants to be non-compliant with their diet, um, where the person they're talking to, where the person that has to tell them no, and they get really upset. And they're like, why are you guys doing this to me? Well, I'm like, it's not me. It's not me, it's your dietitian and your doctor, sir. You have to talk to them or, ma or ma'am, whatever. Um, but it's really important to try and figure out how you can satisfy that person's cravings and needs without going over their dietary restrictions and kind of keeping them in line with their dietary restrictions that are set. Um, and I think part of that is understanding culture and diversity, especially around food. Yeah, that was so, that was so well said that like, it's, it's a hard thing to do, but it's so important to keep in mind, no matter what population you're working with, homeless, lifestyle, socioeconomic, um, where they're from, from the States, really, really well said. So one, one more question, what has been the most annoying or frustrating or, um, challenging thing about holding the DTR credential in the time that you've had it? Um, I, well, that's tough for me to speak to because I haven't had it for very long. Yeah. Um, but there is obviously continuing education requirements that you do have to have. I think it's uh, like 50 or 75 within five years. Um, luckily, MSU Denver, um, Denver Dietetics Association, Colorado Association of Nutrition and Dietetics all are very good at um, holding events that will support your continuing education specifically that are interesting as well. Um, so they're always advertising things on like Instagram, Facebook, whatever, their personal website, like events that you can do um, and sit and listen and, and hold and gain your continuing education credits while you do that. Um, so like one, for example, I did years and years ago, um, didn't have to do it, but just did it as a student. They encourage you to do that as well to like, you know, network with um, your peers and potential preceptors. Um, one I did years ago though, was um, a guy who did, had his PhD in like agriculture, I think uh, up at CSU. Um, and he talked about food sustainability um, and you know, what happens when there's no more farmers left because farm farming is, you know, not super popular. Um, a lot of people don't know how to grow their own food. Should we be teaching it in schools? What happens when water sources dry up, et cetera, et cetera. So that kind of, <laughs> I feel like all the students at the end were kind of left like, oh shoot, what do we do now? <laughs> what do we do? Like, how do we guide um, everyone and, you know, make sure that we're being sustainable with our suggestions while also being realistic about, like, like we said before, cultural aspects, socioeconomic access, socioeconomic aspects, um, you know, healthcare access, all of that. Um, so there's just so much to take into consideration. And it's funny now because my emphasis at University of Vermont will be food sustainability. Um, so I can't wait to learn about that and take that kind of all over into every facet of where I decide to go with this career. Yeah, that's awesome. That kind of came full circle, like it putting really yourself did. out there as a student and doing this <laughs> continual education. That's really, really cool. So yeah. with everything you just went through, are there any resources that just come to mind that you want to drop um, and let people know about that were really helpful besides the Visual Veggie software that you used? 
Um, Eat Right Pro, always be looking at Eat Right. Um, utilize your school's resources. I don't know about every school, obviously, but MSU Denver had amazing resources that they put together for, for us um, in terms of like how to nail down distance preceptors. Um, you know, they had like a huge dashboard of like all of the universities and like how to sort through them. Um, but based off of like your needs and your wants, like clinical emphasis, um, community emphasis, do you need financial aid or not? Um, how long the program is, they had a huge dashboard for that. Um, definitely utilize your resources by state um, and by city. Like I said, I have been following the Denver Dietetics Association and the Colorado Association of Nutrition and Dietetics for years and years now. Um, you know, just be, planning, be aware, be always trying to learn more about how you're going to get ahead, um, how you're going to make yourself stand out, um, use your resources. Yes, state, city, they all have them. Every single state should have um, like a dietetic association. Um, and just don't be afraid to put yourself out there. That's something that I really struggled with a lot, especially as somebody who was working full time and going to school full time. When I started um, this journey, it I um, wasn't able to like network with my peers very much because I was in night classes and that really frustrated me. So I went back to serving um, for a little while so that I could do that. Um, and I think that really helped me. You just have to really be in tune with who you are and what you specifically need. Um, easier said than done, but just try and figure out what's best for you and uh, work through it that way and utilize the resources. Reddit has actually been a great resource. <laughs> so they have, um, they have like a dietetics thread, an RD2B thread, um, all of that. Reddit was a great resource. Facebook has a ton of resources too and a ton of groups where people are asking all of these questions and professionals that have gone through it are already answering them. So yes, re community resources are the best way. And it's the best way to get encouragement if you feel like you're struggling with something in particular. Like that was something that I did over and over again because going back to be before my GPA was a little bit lower and it was so hard for me to grasp the fact that I could continue on this track with that lower GPA. Um, so I got a lot of encouragement um, on Facebook and Reddit specifically that I could still do it and I did it. <laughs> so that, so it's finally starting to pay off and it's really awesome to see but yes use your resources be always looking even if you're just now getting into your you know first semester as an undergrad start now and um just that that, that way it's not so stressful and you're not trying to like compress all of that information at one time um when you're like you know just starting to apply to dicus like think ahead for sure yeah, that's, that's so great. And those resources, I like Facebook and Reddit. Those are like, not like your, your art, like what's it called? Your researched ones, but they're still, they're just people talking and encouragement. So it, I love that you brought those, those two resources up um, that were helpful for you. Anything else you want to add? You just gave a beautiful, encouraging speech there, but any, anything else you want to leave with the NDTR audience before we close out the interview? Oh gosh, I don't know. Um, follow me on Instagram, <laughs> Caitlin's Way, um, C-A-I-T-L-I-N-S-W-A-Y-Y, -Y, throwback to the Nickelodeon show, Caitlin's Way. <laughs> um, I do post uh, nutrition related things on there occasionally, but it is personal blog, um, so you know, do with that what you will, but yes, follow me on Instagram, but that's it. <laughs> yes. No, I love that. We will, I will link your Instagram down below and we will post you on our Instagram. So hopefully people can find you there too. Thank awesome. you so much, Caitlin, for your time. Thank you everyone for watching. Make sure to give this video a like, comment down below something you took away and go follow Caitlin on Instagram. We'll see you in our next episode.